Hey fellas, welcome to part three of the P40 build. In this exciting episode, we get it all finished up. Uh, but before we take a look at the finished model, I'll show you how I add a few little details towards the end. Uh, one one uh, segment of it, I show you how I do the uh, use the UV glue for making lights and how I'm painting those on. Um, I also show you how I add the uh, bare metal foil when I, I put those on the pistons on the landing gear. It gives a, a, a nice little effect. Uh, before we get started though, excuse me, I uh, got a good buddy. He's a world-renowned expert in P40s. In fact, his picture is like right back there. He's the guy that sent me the hugs picture, if you saw that in a few um, build series ago. Real good guy. But uh, he informed me that the paint scheme is not accurate, and I know that, and the owner knows that. Uh, so those of those of you who uh, are wondering why I painted it the way I did, uh, the owner the owner wanted it painted up like the Revel box art. It reminded him of of uh, building the uh, Revel kit as a kid. So uh, that's the way we did it. And for those those of you modelers, don't worry about what other people say. If you want to paint it a certain way, just paint it the way you want. It's your model. Um, you know, do, do whatever you want. It, it really doesn't matter what other people think. So um, that's about it. Let's uh, get on with the video. And uh, if you want to skip just to the finished video and you don't want to see the little detail stuff that I do, I'll put a timestamp right here and you can skip to the finished part. Okay, now I'm gonna do the lights. And this had some molded on lights and instead of cutting those off, and using the clear parts or using my UV glue. I just left them on and I went along and I painted them white. And I'll show you how I'm gonna color color them here in a second. But I'm also have to take care of these lights along the side of the fuselage. And how I'm doing this is I'm using my five second fix UV glue. Now you kinda gotta be careful with this. <clears throat> it doesn't, I wouldn't recommend using it for clear lights that you're not going to paint because it will yellow over time, I've found. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit on my little lid here, and I'm taking a toothpick, getting some on my toothpick. It might be too much. And I'm just gonna put it in here. You do have to be careful with this. It will right, wipe away, away with alcohol. However, <laughs> this uh, it uh, if if you use alcohol on here, it's probably going to take your paint away too. And because I got a little too much in there, I'm just going to take a dry toothpick and try to get some of that out. And that looks pretty good. And I don't know if the camera picked that up. So now I'm going to take my UV light on the back of it and just hit it. Now I found this doesn't always cure it completely. It's still a little tacky. But uh, since I'm going to be covering this up with some blue clear Tamiya, uh, it's really not going to matter. And once I, once I cover it up with the paint, then I will, uh, I'll hit it again with UV light. One thing to keep in mind, if you do this in direct sunlight, it will cure it because of the UV light. Okay, now I've already done the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is take, oh, and the reason, I don't know if I said this, but the reason that I use a toothpick instead of just shooting it out of the, the tip is because sometimes there are air bubbles and you can get a little too much. See, there was an air bubble that popped up right there. And that just makes a mess on your model. So I always like to use a toothpick whenever I do this. Uh, let's see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these blue. And from what I understand, they use yellow lights. And so they use blue lenses, which yellow and blue, blue make green. So that's why I believe that is why uh, a lot of these lenses on these World War II planes were, were blue. So I'm just going to take a little bit of thinner and dip my brush in it. And I'm just using the lid. Now when you when you paint these lights, you don't want to go over more than uh more than once. You want to try to get it the first go around. 
because this dries pretty quick. And there we go, we have our blue light. Now I'll do, and I'm doing, I'm working the inside out because if I put the blue over here and then start working in, what happens is I end up accidentally touching the uh, Tamiya uh, clear glue, or the clear uh, Tamiya, and I end up making a mess. So I always try to work inside out when I can. I got too much thinner. My kids are getting ready to go to school, so they, they like to fight before school. And again, this is, uh, to me, a clear blue. All right. And there is our blue light. Now, for the, for the uh, clear bulbs, I've painted those white. And for those, I'm going to use, to me, a smoke, X19. And then obviously for the red ones, I'll use the red, but I'm gonna go along and paint each one of these with the, uh, with the clear transparent colors. And that will, that will uh, be nice and shiny and it will give that translucent effect like you would have with a clear part. So that's how I'm doing it. Okay, one thing that I like to do when I, uh, put landing gear on a plane is I like to recreate the chrome look on the piston on the uh, the landing gear and a lot of times what I'll use is bare metal foil and if you've never used this it's kind of finicky so uh, it takes a little bit of practice I also could come along and use Molotov chrome uh, liquid chrome if you've never used one of these it's it's pretty interesting uh, I'll show it in probably in another video but there are lots of videos out there showing it but uh, this is the way I typically like to do it. Now I've already done this one, so you can see the difference in the uh, the sheen and the color right there. And I've already so I've already done this one. And what I, how I do this is I've already got a piece cut, but I'll take the landing gear part and I'll put it right up next to the uh, the edge of the bare metal foil, and I'll figure out how wide it needs to be and I want it just a little bit under the width of the piston. So I've already got this one cut out. Make sure that that's cut. And again, this is pretty finicky, but once you once you uh practice a little bit, you can you can deal with it. So I just take my Exacto blade and lift it up just a little bit. And now I'm going to take my tweezers Now it's pretty fragile and it tends to uh, roll up on itself. Then I'll stick it on my, I try to start it where it's not gonna be as easily seen. Okay, so I've got it started. Then I'll take one of these little, real narrow cotton buds and I'm gonna start burnishing it down and then I'm going to just follow it along and you got to make sure it's straight because sometimes it doesn't want to be straight. So I'm just going to start burnishing it down as I go to make sure that there, there aren't any creases or folds. And I'm just going to go around like this and make sure the edges are all down nice and neat. Get it folded in under these scissors, and it is starting to twist on me. I didn't get this one as straight as I'd like, but we'll deal with it. Again, burnishing it down. 
Now, I don't want to overlap this too much. It's pretty thin, but I really don't want to increase the, the thickness of it. Now, when I get all the way around, I still have some extra left over. I can take a real sharp X-Acto blade and just come along and cut the excess off. and then burnish it the rest of the way down. And you don't want to go against where you, uh, you don't want to start burnishing it this way because you'll lift up that edge. Once it gets down, it is pretty sticky, but you can peel it off. But it does tend to fall apart because it is so thin. And there we have our chrome piston. Simple as that. Like I said, it does take a little bit of practice, but it does give you a real good result. All right, fellas, here it is, and I'm real happy with it. Now, there are a lot of little bitty fragile parts. I went ahead and glued in the, let's see this right here, the little sights that I made <clears throat> because I, I drilled the holes and they were kind of tight and I had to loosen them up and they were a little too loose and I almost lost the front sight down into the fuselage. So I ended up going ahead and gluing that. I think I can ship it. With, uh, without disturbing those, so we'll see. Uh, overall, it's a really good kit. Uh, there are some pitfalls, like uh, the tail section. I wish they wouldn't have done it that way. I assume there's a reason they were gonna come out with a different model, whatever, uh, a different version of the P40. It does cause some issues. If you glue it in the way I did, then uh, you're gonna have less problems than if you try to do it the way the instructions show you. Uh, you do have to have to uh, sand away the seam and uh, rescribe, which, you know, is what it is. So in that respect, it is somewhat difficult, but the rest of it went together really well. The interior went together extremely well. Just take a 360 degree view of it. Now this, uh, I assume it's a pitot tube. Uh, it's just dry fit in there, so I'm going to pull that out before I ship it. The, uh, the markings were all painted on. The only decals I put on was, was this Tiger. And the, the Rebel decals had this... I didn't use the Rebel decals because they were just garbage uh, that the guy sent me. So I used the Hasegawa Tiger and I painted on... I just made a mask from... Uh, just like I did with the... Ooh, yep, there's another fragile piece. Ah! But uh, just like the mask that I made for the shark's teeth... I made one, it's a simple one, just for the uh, little triangle thing here. So I painted that on. And uh, I really, really like how this turned out. The uh, It does come with two window or uh, canopies. This is the open one. And then the closed one has a little cut off where it'll fit right in there and it fits snug. And that's what I used to mask off the interior. Uh, the bottom, here's a look at the bottom. I did a little bit of streaking just based on some pictures. And uh, I did use the clear parts for this uh, light and then this one over here. I just used Tester's clear glue to glue those in. I used bare metal foil on the inside and uh, just burnished it down real good so it gives it that little uh, mirror-like reflection. And uh, this was a pain to put on with these little doohickeys afterwards. I'm glad I did it that way, though. I, I I thought about gluing this on before I painted, but it would have been really hard to get in there. And I know it's hard to see, but I did do a little bit of streaking and weathering on the tank. I didn't do a whole lot of chipping, just along the, uh, the uh, leading edge of the wing and along the wing root here. So, a little bit of oil work. I uh, took some oil paint and dirtied up this area like some of the soot would get caught up in those those panel lines. <clears throat> uh, I did my uh, the, the same technique I used on the Spitfire 
exhaust stacks, I did the same thing here. These were a pain in the butt, even though they were resin. Uh, they look good, but they were a pain in the butt to get put in there. Some of them might be a little crooked, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And trying to, I was, I super glued those in and trying to break them back off. I'm afraid I'm going to wreck them. So we'll just assume that this uh, plane got dented up and dinged up and some of those exhaust stacks got a little bent. It's not real noticeable. Uh, the resin wheels look really good. This one might be a little canted. Uh, when I had to drill out the resin wheel so that it would accept the, uh, the, the kit uh, landing gear. And I might have drilled it just a little crooked. Eh, I don't know. It's, it, yeah, it, it's not something you're really going to notice. But other than that, I am really happy with how this turned out. Propeller spins. It's on that uh, little shaft that sticks out of the front of the fuselage. So there we go, fellas. We'll flash up some pictures, and uh, I will catch you on the next episode.